everyone, this is going to be a really short video, it's on a very niche topic called fish farming, so if you're not covering it in your board, stop watching this now and go and watch something else. However, you poor people having to know this, let's just quickly talk about what you need to know about fish farming, it's very quick. Right, why do we farm fish? Well, it's because there's a shortfall in the number of wild fish out there. The stocks are getting dangerously low, mainly to the extinction of some species, which is why we need to fish farm. And what that means is having massive tanks or massive nets in lakes and things where you can grow huge numbers of fish. So what you will need to know is the good things and the bad things about fish farming and also how you would do it. So what you would do firstly is you would feed the fish on a high protein diet. That's always worth the mark. You would need to control any disease, so you may need to add antibiotics, and the reason why disease will be more prevalent is just because the fish is so close together. The water needs to be very carefully controlled in terms of the temperature, oxygen, availability, and the buildup of waste, because that could lead to disease. There should be pesticides added to the water in order to kill any parasites, and you need to make sure that no predators can actually reach the fish and kill them and eat them that way. In terms of disadvantages, well, of course, you've got issues with antibiotics being fed to the fish, um, and actually what that may do is it will end up in the food chain and there's a lot of questions over, question marks over whether humans want to be consuming these things. The other thing is, is that the fish have to be fed little pellets which are made of other fish and it's actually estimated that more wild fish get killed as a result of trying to feed the farmed fish um, compared with if we didn't have any farmed fish which is obviously ridiculous. So yeah, a really quick video, I will attach some questions. Um, They'll always ask you more experimental based questions, so make sure you're happy with your variables. So obviously your independent variable is the thing that you change, your dependent variable is the thing that you measure, and your controlled variables are the things you keep the same. I hope you found this video helpful. Make a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. I'll see you very soon. So here's my first fish farming related question for the diagram shows a salmon fish farm in the sea. Gosh, there's a lot going on here. Suggest three ways in which the net protects the salmon, so use your common sense here and look at the diagram for reference. So for the first mark, say that it protects it from the birds. For the second mark, say that it protects it from the seals. And then you could say for the third mark, um, it keeps out the other fish to avoid competition or keeps out the other wild salmon to avoid disease. So anything sensible like that will get you the marks. Waste food and feces can collect in the mud beneath the fish farm. Suggest how this could affect the growth of the salmon. Right, let's work out how it would affect the growth of the salmon. Well, it's definitely not going to be a good thing. So for the first mark, say that it would decrease the growth. The reason being that the bacteria will build up due to the presence of all the feces and the grossness. And remember that the bacteria respire. They use oxygen and therefore that oxygen will mean that there's less oxygen available for the fish. So less respiration. So to recap, first mark decreases growth of fish. Second mark, bacteria. Third mark that they respire, fourth available mark that there's less oxygen present. C. Suggest what should be done with the dead salmon with fungus growing on it. This is so gross. Ugh. You obviously want to remove this dead salmon um, in order to prevent it spreading any further disease. Give the example of biological control shown in the diagram of the fish farm. Okay, let's have a look. And you can see here that it's the ras, is that how you pronounce it? And what they do is they eat the sea lice, and you can see that on the right-hand side of this diagram. Two, fish farming provides protein for humans to eat. A freshwater fish farmer noticed the following problems. Suggest the cause of each problem and a solution for the farmer. So firstly, an increase in the number of bird predators in the area. Right, the reason for that is obviously they're attracted to the fish because they think they can eat them, so we need to use nets to stop them reaching the fish. An increase in the growth of algae on the surface of the fish ponds. That's probably due to all the feces, the poo from the fish. Um, and basically that helps them grow. So what you could do here is remove the waste or um, don't overfeed the fish effectively. An increase in the number of fish with disease. So the likely reason for that is due to overcrowding. So we want to stop that by um, removing infected fish or just keep less fish present actually. Suggest two advantages of fish farming compared to catching fish in the wild. Well, firstly, it's easy. So you've got fish all year round. Um, second of all, it reduces overfishing of wild fish. Thirdly, if you're feeling a bit alternative, you could say that there's less risk to fishermen if you use fish farming because they don't have to be at, in the wide open ocean. And also fish farming means you can selectively breed and get very high quality fish. Question nine. The diagram shows how water flow is controlled in a fish farm to maintain water quality. Step one, fish are fed. Step two, the pump removes fish waste. Step three, fish waste decomposes. Step four, fit plants photosynthesize. Step five, clean water drains from soil into the tank. Step six, the pump returns clean water to the fish tank. How clever. 
Name a waste product produced by the fish. Okay, you could write anything here like feces or stools. That's a funny name for poo. Urine, urea or ammonia is fine here. Explain how the removal of fish waste helps to maintain water quality. Right, the reason why you need to remove the fish waste is because otherwise um, the fish waste would get broken down by microorganisms and then the microorganisms would use up all that water, all that oxygen, sorry, in the water in their respiration, um, which means that there'd be way less growth of the fish. So for the first mark, just say, mention the word microbes. Second mark, say that they respire. Um, and then the third available mark, obviously it's only worth two marks, say that they use up that oxygen in their respiration. Part two, explain how adding antibiotics would also help to maintain water quality. Right, the antibiotics would kill the bacteria present and that would mean that there'd be less infection or chance of disease in the fish. C. The fish waste from step 2 is used by the plants in steps 3 and 4. Describe how the fish waste helps the plants to grow. So let's just quickly check back at that diagram. Right, well, what happens is that fish waste gets broken down by microbes. I've already actually said two marks there. There's a mark for saying breakdown or decay and there's a mark for saying microbes. It breaks down that waste into nitrates and minerals and nutrients and the plants absorb them and they use it in their growth to produce proteins and amino acids. Um, you can also shove in the fact that plants use carbon dioxide to photosynthesize but for me that's less relevant to the question. If I were answering it it's worth four marks I would mention microbes, the fact that they decay the waste for the second mark and that they produce mineral ions which are used by the plants to produce proteins and that's more than enough. Suggest what could be done on this fish farm to prevent interspecific predation. Well, remember that is the point that farmed fish are preyed upon by other species, so a sensible way in which to stop that is to cover the fish in nets or use a cage. Some nuclear power stations take in cold water from the sea and use it to cool their reactors. The warm water is released back into the sea. This can cause thermal pollution because the increased water temperature has an effect on the dissolved concentration of oxygen. Does that even make sense? This table shows the effect of water temperature on the concentration of dissolved oxygen. So at 5 degrees we've got 12.37, moving up to 20 degrees where we've got 8.84. So we can see that increase in the temperature reduces the concentration of oxygen. Calculate the percentage change in the concentration of oxygen when the water temperature rises from 10 degrees to 15 degrees to show you're working. So let's make sure we're looking at the right numbers. So at 10 degrees there was 10.90, um, whereas at 15 there's 9.76. So the calculation I'm doing here is 9.76 divided by 10.92 times it by 100. So I can see that at 15, then there's only 89.3% um, of the amount of oxygen that was present. So in order to work out the percentage change, just do 100, take away that answer, and you'll see that there is a 10.6% decrease in the amount of oxygen. Use information from the table to explain why it'd be unlikely for a fish farm to be situated near a power station. Well, I just said, um, the power station leads to an increase in the temperature and we can see that an increase in the temperature reduces the amount of oxygen present. So say that for the first mark and less oxygen means obviously less respiration by the fish and therefore less respiration must lead to less growth of the fish. B. The table lists some methods used to produce large numbers of fish on a fish farm. Complete the table by stating how each method helps to increase fish production. Right, so anti adding antibiotics to the water, what that does is it kills bacteria and controls disease. Using nets to cover the tanks protects the fish from being eaten by predators. And feeding small quantities of food frequently means that all the food is eaten, so there's less eutrophication or less bacterial growth. Fish are a good source of protein in the human diet. Describe what happens to a fish protein in the gut of a human. My gosh, hello question, just jumping to digestion. Right, well, remember that protein is broken down by enzymes and the enzyme involved is protease you need to state that that protein gets broken down into amino acids you need to say where the protease enzyme is made and remember that is in the stomach um, you can also mention so we finished talking about enzymes you can also mention the fact that hydrochloric acid also helps to break down that protein um, and you could say that bile is produced which I find a really weird point bile is made in the liver and what it does is it produces the optimum pH. But for me, I wouldn't even think to say that because of the fish protein. So I'm just going to go through one more time where the five marks are that I would have said. So I would say that protease, one mark, breaks down the protein, breaking down is the second mark, into amino acids for the third mark. Protease is made in the stomach for the fourth mark. And I would say that hydrochloric acid also contributes for the fifth mark.
This is the last question I'm going to take. Fish can be produced in large numbers on fish farms. Design an investigation to find out if the growth of fish is affected by the temperature of the water in which they're farmed. Right, you really need to be specifying all your independent, dependent and control variables here. So, first of all, the independent variable, which is the thing that you change. So we're going to be using different temperatures here. Um, in terms of the dependent variable, we're going to be looking at how much they grew. So, and you need to say that so you need to say that you're going to measure the length of the fish and that you are obviously going to... So the dependent variable here, because you're looking at how much they grew, you could say here that you're going to measure the length of the fish or how much they weigh their mass, for example. In terms of control variables, this is everything we need to keep the same in order to make it a fair test. So obviously you need to use the same species of fish, the same size, the same age, the same gender. It's always important in these sorts of questions that you state that you need to repeat in order to improve the reliability and also say things like um, use the same time period, so maybe a week or a month, anything sensible. For any extra points, just say use the same food type, same food mass, same oxygen, same tank size. So in this question, you need to talk about all your variables, so obviously the independent, dependent and control variables. The independent variable is the thing that you're changing and obviously you're changing the temperature here. The dependent variable is what you're measuring, right, you're measuring the growth of the fish, you need to state how you do that, whether it's by measuring the length of the fish or their weight, for example. You've got lots and lots of controls you need to mention, obviously in order to keep it a fair test you need to use the same species of fish, same size of fish, same age of fish, um, and also things like same food type that you're feeding them, or the same amount of food, or the same oxygen present, because obviously the, if you have less oxygen that will reduce the growth of the fish as they'll be respiring less use the same tank size. Um, make sure you state a time period for this experiment, whether you're going to make it last over a week or a month, it doesn't really matter, but just choose a sensible time period. And lastly, for re reliability, make sure you repeat. And it doesn't really matter what the experiment is. Shove the word repeat in and you'll definitely get a mark. Right, I hope you found this helpful. It does make way more sense to do questions on this rather than just learning the theory so you see the sorts of things that they'll ask. Um, don't forget to like my video and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.